So what would you get as a baby if you are mixing parts of a Bamboo Labs 3D printer together with a Prusa XL kind of a machine and some other goodies from the world of 3D printing? You will get the Snapmaker U1. Or did you want? I don't know. But let's find out together and see where this amazing 3D printer is all about. Right here. Hey! Zach here and welcome to this video. As suggested by the title and also the thumbnail, you can already guess where this Zach React video is all about. Just a little side note, I don't have the 3D printer, but I'm going to give my thoughts and ideas about this brand new, just announced 3D printer of Snapmaker. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the site and see where this 3D printer is all about. And then you already know why I made the intro like I did. And so here we are at the Page from the Snapmaker U1. I was waiting on the announcement because there was already going something on Twitter or X that something was going to happen on the 8th of July. They are going to mention something very special. Well, we have here the Snapmaker U1. So it is also on the site. And now I can watch some of the, 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 the pictures, how the machine is looking like, and some other of the cool stuff. What I saw on the Twitter site and especially uh, this teaser video. So in this, this is a teaser. Stop it. So this is a teaser video. Um, it's it's flashy. It's it's popping up very quickly. But it, I saw this and I was like, what is this? Well, we have spool holes on the left side. We had spool holes on the right side, on the back side, on the top, everywhere. And now we have on both sides. And I saw something sticking out and I was like, what? What are they going to do? What is Snapmaker doing? Here little... Yeah, so it's it's very flashy, so they don't want to spoil too much. But I saw I saw this and I was like, I saw that before. And if you know some other of the other brands and also the little hint that I did at the beginning of this video, how this looks like, this is almost like we are going to take the Bamboo AMS Lite, cut it in half, put one side on the left and the other side on the right side, and we have a thick AMS light, but then the Snapmaker version. So what I think that it did was taking the best of each world within the 3D printing. And instead of having spools rolling inside of a AMS system or a CFS system or a Ace Pro system, no, they have the, uh, the thing where you can put the spool over the spool holder, over the clamp. So that is pretty neat. And also that this is a, I think of maybe a 45 degree angle, could also be 60 degrees, I think 60 more. And then we have here where the filament is being loaded up. Maybe in the future, they are going to uh, add some additional stuff so that you can have an enclosed uh, system here. But let's uh, continue looking further. I hope it doesn't go. So there was a little point in the video where I was like, oh, wait, wait. This is not a this is not a single extruder printing multiple colors. No, this is a tool changer. Whoa, this is changing a whole lot more. So, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, like Bamboo combining with the Prusa XL. So we have the long bunny, we have the long bunny ears. I don't know if other people is, are calling it bunny ears. Maybe I am the only one. And maybe I'm the only one. And now everybody is going to say bunny ears. But anyways, so let's continue watching. And here we see some flashes. And so here we see on the top, we see the lines of the tool changer. So we don't need to watch anything of this anymore. We are going straight to the page. And here we see it in full bright colors, how it looks like and what you can expect from this U1. Just like mentioned, uh, the machine looks very uh, similar to, uh, to some of the things what we have seen before. Is the Core XY? I think it might be a Core XY since this mentioned five times more speed. AMS light cut in half, put it on each side and you have something that I think is, is neat. It's, it's great. You can use every type of filament spool. I think the smaller spools, you need to find a solution for that. It's an enclosed 3D printer, but seeing the tools on the uh, backside, it's open from the top, fully enclosed. Uh, I think more draft protected. I don't see any size mentioned here. A nice colorful display. Maybe we are going to see more. So make more, less waste. So instead of purging every time of a color swap, like the Bamboo Labs, like the Creality K1, like the also the uh, Anycubic uh, Cobra S1, less filament waste and uh, 
make more because every time you save up filament you can use that filament for other projects as well yeah this this looks very cool yeah support material <laughs> It's always needed uh, when you're printing wood overhang. So you will still have the support where companies in the future need to find a solution for. Or maybe some makers are finding a solution for. Five times faster printing with zero perch. Just like mentioned, you are switching out the tool head. So you have the base unit and then you have the part where the filament is waiting to be used by the tool head. So this design looks very familiar like what we have seen before on the uh, Bamboo Labs 3D printer, very, very similar. I'm looking like uh, on, on the Anycubic uh, Cobra has also a very similar print head. It, it doesn't really matter. It's going about the aesthetics. How does it look like? Here we have a video. I don't know if this, this, this is the YouTube video that I wanted to show. Here we see the display more up close. Like here it says, start, make something wonderful. Yeah, I believe that. I do need to mention that on the Snapmaker J1, the, the uh, IDEX 3D printer, very beautiful display. I really enjoyed using the display. Very intuitive and very um, straightforward. There is a Wi-Fi icon on there, so I think Wi-Fi only, but it can also be that they are using Ethernet port. So Snapmaker, if you are seeing this video and you are planning to have only a Wi-Fi, it would be also nice to have a Ethernet port for people that want to use Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi. Anyways, that's my five cent on that. I see here some temperatures. It looks like we have here a nozzle temperature, bed temperature and enclosure temperature. Then we have here some, some of the normal standard buttons that you will find on many displays. And then also here some colors. I only see here PLA is, is maybe a reason for that, but uh, let's go a little bit further. So we have on the left side, we have the Snapmaker U1. Very cool, very amazing. But then on the right hand side, I see a um, printers with filament changer. Why are they using a DIY built printer? This this is a forum. Uh, this I think this is forum with the uh, box turtle. This is what people make from scratch. They buy a complete kit uh, from LDO, for example, and then they are going to assemble a fully DIY 3D printer all by themselves and have a lot of fun during the process. Why they are using this type of printer instead of using uh, Bumble Labs, Creality, uh, Anycubic, any of the other 3D printers that are similar to this one. You cannot compare a tool changing 3D printer with a multicolor single tool head that is built as a DIY kit printer. I don't understand why Snapmaker did, did do this. I would like to see comparison to other 3D printer. And if you want to compare it with an other brand 3D printer or another 3D printer, just use a little filter over it so that people can guess which kind of printer it is without pointing like Bamboo, Coreality. But why Voron? Voron is a DIY printer that people built by themselves. So this is a little negative thing that I don't like that they use something like this. I get what they want to say, but this is not the right printer to use. So filament swapped in three seconds. Well, we have seen this before also on the Wonder Maker, the one that was previously on Kickstarter. Uh, four, four seconds, if you take a stopwatch next to it, we can al already guess how it is going to look like for uh, this. This is basically a five or six seconds uh, swap because yes, if you don't have any tool, then it can be three seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so five seconds. I think it's heating up the nozzle before it's going to be picked up. So the electronics are in the tool head and in the plate somewhere so that when they are connected, you, you get what I mean. But I think also on the back side that the tool is preheated before it's going to be swapped, I guess. But is there something like a ooze stopping mechanism in there or a little silicon base where the nozzle is you know, uh, pushed against 500 times uh, speed, yeah. Snapmaker U1 versus printers with filament changer, five hours versus 30 hours. It's a save of 83%. Is that the same video that I wanted to watch? So this is a 37 second video. I think it's the same one. Oh, no, we have here some different kind of uh, footage. Let's go over it here. So here we have the filament spool holders. Here we have the, the Bowden tube. And here we have the entry of one side for the filament loading. So on the other side, you have exactly the same kind of thing. So that's that's cool here we have four tool heads not a five tool head like the prusa xl so only five if i need to guess that tool head so this part 
I'm going to see how much uh, space that this is. Just a second. So on the Bumble Lab P1S, the one that I have, the front side is 60 millimeters thick. We have four next to each other with some spacing uh, in between. And also uh, on the sides, we see some, uh, some, some space. So I think in total, the four tool heads, when they are touching each other, it's two, uh, 240 millimeters. So we have that of a space. Then we, let's see, I think the total width would be like 290, maybe 300 millimeters. So 30 centimeters thick. Looks very clean, very sleek. As you can see, they have here a wiper, a silicone wiper. And we have here also the thing that uh, usually with the standard 3D printers nowadays for the nozzle, you need to have that. And yes, like mentioned, and like I thought already, this is a Core XY. This looks like carbon rods, which makes the whole gantry a whole lot lighter. These are, I think, 10 or 12 millimeter rods, smooth rods. Inject them all the plastic parts. Uh, I see here, I see a lead screw. There, I see a lead screw. I think they are using three lead screws in total. Yeah, and since this tool head is going around over the top from the 3D printer, you cannot really close it down. Maybe they are going to find a solution for that to make it enclosed. Yeah, so infinite color and material combo. So not only PLA, but also different kind of materials. I think something like PEGI, ABS, ASA, but depending on the maximum temperature of the hot end, and if the printer is fully enclosed, yes or no, depends on which kind of other engineering materials you can do. Maybe they are focusing now more on consumer-based 3D printers, so filament types like PLA, PEGI, ABS, then if it is not fully enclosed, some of the materials cannot be printed with. So the print volume, is 270 times 270 times 270. It's just right here. So with my 260, I I was pretty close. And no, I didn't see this before. So what else do we see? Like mentioned, three leaf screw set up, one here, one here, and one there. I do see this here, This those weird, I think rubber-like things. So I believe that, that this could be enclosed, but you will get a very large top hat. So yes, in the end, you probably will be able to print in uh, other materials as well. I see here PLA with PEG, PLA, P, uh, TPU. You can print TPU, direct drive. You are not using an AMS CFS uh, Ace Pro uh, kind of filament storage system, but you are using a tool changer. A drag drive is always better to use for TPU prints. And then we have here also PLA with PVA, of course. So Snapmaker U1. Hmm. What else do we have here on the side? Print speed 300 millimeters per second, travel speed 500 millimeters per second, and acceleration 20,000 millimeters per second square. Real time printing footage. Yeah. If you have a Bumble Labs, a Creality, or any other of the nowadays printers, you when you are seeing this image, you see the print head moving, you know, this is what you are expecting from this machine as well. But then having the tool changer instead, cut the perch, cut the waste. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you have filament left over on the spool, you can use it for other projects and less waste means more environmental friendly. So that's a good thing. Calibration is always a challenge in 3D printing, especially with four tool heads. Operating at high speeds by introducing a series of compensation algorithms, U1 delivers smooth, dimensionally accurate prints on par with single head printers. So that's cool. Four tool heads work as one. No more spooky shadows. No, oh, I never have spooky shadows. Fine tuning extrusion with ex exquisite uh, details. So also the, the input shaper and uh, nail the first layer, nail the print. A, uh, they, they also here, just like with the uh, Prusa, they, they are going for a perfect first layer. So here you see the little, uh, for over a decade, Snapmaker has been helping makers worldwide. I'm not going to read the full story. You can do it yourself. I will put the link in the description of this video. You can enter your email to subscribe and, um, I will give my last five cents about what I think of this 3D printer. So yeah, the Snapmaker U1. Well, this is going to be a Kickstarter campaign. I'm not going to make it better. I think that this is going to be a Kickstarter campaign 3D printer because it won't be 
their first printer on Kickstarter. They have done it before. All of those were on the, uh, you know, even the Artisan was on, on Kickstarter as well. So I believe that this 3D printer is going to be on Kickstarter as well. I think that the machine is uh, nicely put together. Um, all of the Snapmaker machines are built very durable. Everything is uh, aluminum, uh, steel, very little to almost no plastic parts in there. Maybe not from the outside, but more maybe from the inside. But I think that the U1 is a little bit less made out of metal and plastic shells. I think this is a great machine. Nice approach, uh, Snapmaker for the A, uh, for the U1. But, uh, but then again, um, don't compare it to foreign 3D printers, please. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this new Snapmaker 3D printer? Hey, if you made it this far in this video, you are amazing. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye.